What's up Spurs fans? Today we're going to go over Keldon Johnson and some of his film from his best and worst performance from the bubble. First we're going to start off with the worst and we'll end on the best. So the first game we're going to look at is the New Orleans Pelicans game. So let's just hop right into it. So here's Keldon's first offensive possession of the game. DeJounte kicks it out to Keldon. Drives, bothered by the contest from favors, misses it, but nothing compared to Pirtle missing a bunch of easy bunnies right there. And then we have Keldon Johnson go ahead and pick up JJ Redick. And that's gonna be his defensive assignment for most of the game, a really tough assignment for any player, let alone a rookie with less than 20 games to his name. Doesn't really have anything to do with the rest of this play. You see Lonzo give Derek a hezzy, finishes at the rim. Derek's gonna stop that more times than not. Now I'm not gonna go over every possession, just ones where Keldon does something well, or maybe he shows some room for improvement. Right here, he definitely fouls JJ Redick. Um, but he keeps his head in the play, he chases Redick around the perimeter, and then DeJounte pokes that loose ball out, and, and Keldon wants it. And that's kind of what's going to happen more times than not, is Keldon wants the ball more than anyone else on the floor. He sees DeJounte poke it out, it's a free-for-all, and he's chasing that thing down, forces a jump ball between him and Drew Holiday. And that's what makes him so special, he's a guy with a high motor who wants the ball, who's going to win you extra possessions, and he does that right here when he wins this jump ball against Drew Holiday. Here the Pelicans are going to set a screen for Redick to try to get him the ball. Doesn't work. DeJounte is absolutely suffocating him. And I went ahead and paused it here so we can look at this. So you have Redick, not enough space to shoot. And you've got Pierre Jackson, who is a quicker guard. And not that Keldon is slow, but Keldon doesn't have the best foot speed. And all Pierre Jackson needs here is one step. He's going to get the ball. And it's inches. You know, pause it again. Milliseconds, you know from getting that shot blocked. Keldon couldn't get to a good effort by him, but he's just beat by a guy who's quicker than he is. On this play, I want y'all to see how well Keldon moves with JJ Redick. JJ takes him for a spin, and he loses him for a second there, but not enough to get him a shot opportunity. Pierre Jackson ends up forcing up a tough shot against Eubanks, and the Spurs get the ball back. Keldon fights over the screen here and pause it. Look at this, just one jab to the left, and that's all it takes for Keldon to be thrown off his balance. and. That's gonna happen with a guy like JJ Redick. You really can't afford not to buy his fakes when they look so convincing. And it's enough room to get him a shot here. And he misses and the Spurs get lucky a little bit. A weird bounce. Not really sure what Rudy Gay's doing here on defense. Makes a late rotation. Drew Eubanks comes in here nice to contest the shot and the Spurs get the ball back. This time the Pelicans do something a little bit different. JJ Redick sets the screen. Keldon Johnson navigates another screen from Jackson Hayes well. Makes Pierre Jackson put up an awkward shot. You love to see it. I've mentioned it before, but watch how well Keldon fights over the screen to contest Redick. It's a miss, and that's about all you can hope for from him in that situation. And he's going to do it again here. Fights through a really tough screen from Jackson Hayes. Tries to do it again to a much worse result. A three-pointer from Redick, and you can't really be upset with Keldon right there. Redick gets that shot off so quickly, and he doesn't really need much breathing room. And on this play, you're going to see them have a miscommunication between him and Eubanks, but thankfully they're bailed out by this overly ambitious pass from Redick. Sticking on the defensive end of the court, we're going to see Keldon Johnson pick up the first of five fouls of this game. And JJ's just a really tough cover here, and we're going to find out that it's not going to be so easy for Keldon to stick with him. Yet another screen from Redick, and pause it here. Look at where Keldon is. Keldon is behind Redick. And what Redick did here is he got the first step on Keldon Johnson. And it's not because he's some amazing athlete with a ridiculous first step. What he is is a lethal shooter who forced a rookie to make a decision. Am I going to cover the three-point line or am I going to stop the drive? And Redick is a guy who is going to shoot that ball more times than not. And he just outsmarts Keldon right here. And let's unpause it. Gets a beautiful little floater off and he beats Keldon. And, you know, that's not unusual from a savvy veteran. And now we're back on the offensive end of things. We've got Lonnie Walker the fourth with the ball here, and he's gonna do something really cool, but before he gets his hammer pass off, pause it. We've got Nico Melli, Josh Hart, and JJ Redick here occupying the paint. I'm not really sure why JJ Redick came over here. He's leaving Keldon Johnson wide open, and while I realize he only shot about 25% from three-point land in the G League, he was absolutely torching the net in the bubble. Not a wise idea to leave him open, and Keldon Johnson makes him pay, sets his feet, shoots the ball, and it's money. 
On this play, Keldon passes up a relatively wide open three in the corner to drive into traffic, but he makes up for it by drawing a foul on Zion and he gets to the line. And actually, that's one of his best skills this early in his career. His free throw rate sits at 49.4%, and just for reference, that's between Giannis on Titicumbo and Bam Adebayo, and it would actually rank 6th among 2020 All-Stars this year. It's really great sign this early into his development, and it's something that I'm looking forward to watching as he continues to grow his game. Can he continue to get to the line? Can he continue to knock them down at a good clip? That is something worth monitoring going forward. Though Lonzo blows by Keldon here, Keldon stays alongside him and kind of leads him into Yaka Pirtle and then competes for this rebound, ends up kicking it out of bounds, but you love to see the hustle here. We haven't talked about it yet, but Keldon Johnson has amazing body control. Watch him put that on display with this difficult finish between Zion Williamson and Josh Hart. Keldon is going to start the playoff guarding JJ, but pause it. JJ sets a screen for Drew Holiday, and we're going to unpause it here. It's forcing Keldon to step up on Drew Holiday. And pause one more time. A screen is set by Derek Favors, and you can see already JJ has way too much daylight to shoot this. The screen is going to level DeJounte. Rudy has no chance to get there, and Redick knocks down the three. Yet another great defensive possession from Keldon Johnson here. Really chases around JJ Redick, unaffected mostly by this screen, and then he's going to make a correct switch here and make life difficult for Etwan Moore with his six, nine, and a quarter wingspan contesting this shot. At the top right of your screen, you're going to see Keldon hounding JJ Redick again, follows him around. Again, around another screen, then denies him a shot, puts him in a tough situation to pass back out. And this possession is going to end with another near turnover, and it almost guarantees a shot clock violation. Really great stuff from the Spurs here. This time, we'll look at a play where Keldon Johnson really can't do anything about this. Um, it's hard to see upon the first look, so we'll go ahead and pause the replay right here. There's DeMar DeRozan and Drew Eubanks trailing the break, so that makes it a five on three. Absolutely nobody on the right side, or I guess what would be the left side of the court here to stop Jackson Hayes, and he's gonna get this pass from Ingram and throw it down for an easy two points. This time down, Keldon Johnson gets caught on the screen pretty obviously here. I'm not really sure if anybody even communicates to him that there is a screen there. Looks like it takes him by surprise. JJ catches the ball, lets it fly, and that's going to go down 9 times out of 10 if you're JJ. Head coach Greg Popovich has likened Keldon Johnson to a Mustang, and he gets a little bit too wild here, knocking over JJ Redick with a charge. I think there's an argument to be made that this was a block since his feet were still moving. Either way, it's a really savvy move by a smart veteran. The Kentucky alum kind of gets away with one here. Watch as he loses his balance and pushes JJ Redick in the back. No call, but most of the time the refs are going to blow their whistles on that one. I know this video is supposed to be about Keldon Johnson, but pause with Marco real quick. Keldon Johnson is wide open with his hands up on the three-point line, and instead Marco opts for this awkward finish and plows through JJ Redick. And it's just a confusing decision to make considering Keldon had the hot hand through the bubble and Marco's trying to be on an NBA roster next season. It's really tough to see from this angle, but there are some terrible things that lead to this Jackson Hayes dunk. So let's go ahead and pause it right about here. So we have Jackson Hayes setting a screen for JJ Redick and Keldon Johnson is going to fight through the screen as we see here. Pause it one more time. Now, Rudy Gay is close enough to help on JJ without leaving Drew Holiday wide open. Kelton has pretty much fought his way back into play here. So it's a little confusing why Drew Eubanks opts to step up when Jackson Hayes is clearly going to roll. And that's what happens here. He gets a nice pass from JJ and just slams it home. Although Kelton's had a pretty good game up to this point, things start to deteriorate with this turnover and a string of fouls that follow. And this is an ugly sequence between the two teams. Also wanted to take time to say I'm very sorry to Frank Jackson, who I've been calling Pierre Jackson for like 99% of this video. He's going to get his revenge with this three. And Keldon doesn't cover anybody. He's clearly upset with himself when he slaps his leg here. And it's just a learning experience. On the very next time down, Keldon makes up for his rookie mistake. He gets a little bit turned around here, and that's alright because he recovers and gets his hand on the ball, forcing yet another turnover. Some really awesome stuff from Keldon, and the Spurs go the other way. Another incredibly tough assignment for Keldon Johnson here, guarding all-star Brandon Ingram. Makes him give up the ball the first time around, but then he gets the ball back, and he gets blown by. Even Drew Eubanks helping here does not matter. Brandon Ingram makes a tough finish over good defense. 
A rough situation continues to get worse for Keldon, and let's pause it. He's about to get called for a foul, and actually I'm not really sure what he does here, so I'll unpause it. The whistle goes off, and they zoom in on Zion, so maybe he hit him and we didn't notice because he's an absolute unit. I have no idea. You absolutely hate to see it because Keldon's gonna pick up another foul here and he definitely hits JJ in the throat or something of the sort, but Redick is a good actor and he remains in the game, so he was fine. And a few possessions later, JJ Redick gets Keldon Johnson again with another ticky tack foul and one here. Beautiful play from Redick, really nice finish, but I can hardly say that I would consider this little bump from Keldon a foul, but it is what it is and he has to pay for it. Not the best showing from Keldon Johnson in this one, but he ends the night on a positive note, tracks down the loose ball, and embraces contact from the 285 pound Zion Williamson. And not many players will lay their body down on the line like Keldon Johnson does. And that's one of the reasons I love him. He is so fearless on both ends of the court, gets to the free throw line, which is something that I've been very impressed with, something that I mentioned earlier in the video, and he knocks these both down after struggling at the beginning of the bubble. Overall, not the greatest game from Keldon Johnson, but you can't really blame him. He had nine points, a rebound, five fouls, I believe, and two steals. Not awful by any means, but you would hope that he would leave more of an impact when he spent that much time on the court, and some of that has to do with defending J.J. Redick. He's an excellent veteran player who understands how to work angles, run around screens, and use ball fakes to his advantage. You know, Keldon didn't really have much of a chance to see this guy before we got into the bubble. He had hardly any experience before we came into the bubble. So all things considered, Keldon did an admirable job. And I think it shows just the amount of trust that Pop has built with Keldon in this short amount of time that he would throw him on somebody as skilled as J.J. Redick. Fortunately, we're going to go ahead and look at the Houston Rockets game where Keldon had a career-high 24 points and 11 rebounds, his first career double-double. So we're going to see a lot more positives in this one, so let's just jump right into it. The first defensive possession goes pretty well for Keldon here, follows Ben Malcolm over to the corner, deters him from shooting. Then he's going to switch on to P.J. Tucker here, and Marco's really not going to put up much resistance, and by the time Keldon helps and contests here on Jeff Green, it's a bucket. We discussed how well Keldon Johnson embraces contact. Watch, he does it again here really well, just takes the bump, doesn't shy away from the hard hit, gets to the line, and that's one of the most encouraging things for me when it comes to Keldon, is his ability to get to the line, and also how well he knocked his shots down over the last couple of games in the bubble. Let's take a look at this transition play, pause it, look where Keldon Johnson is. He is at a severe disadvantage. He's covering Jeff Green right now, but he's gonna have to make up that space to get Ben Mecklemore. And this is where six nine and a quarter wingspan is put to good use. So watch this. We're gonna unpause it. Watch again. Pause. This is insane. How close he gets to getting a hand on this shot. Really does a good job of contesting this shot. Ben Mecklemore doesn't make it. The Spurs get the rebound, and they're going back the other way. I picked out this play because Keldon Johnson does an awesome job of grabbing this rebound and then becoming a one man wrecking crew here. Just in and out dribble crossover takes the bump, still finishes, and one of the reasons I really like this is because Keldon Johnson was assisted on about 75% of his buckets this year, and I think it's so encouraging seeing him be a little creative and finish on his own. I especially love this. Pause it. Keldon Johnson is going to pick up Russell Westbrook for a full 94 feet on this play, and Russell Westbrook is going to blow by him right here get to the rim and miss a really easy layup, doesn't really matter. I'm still very happy with Keldon Johnson for taking that assignment with pride, showing no letdown, no fear. And then on the other end, he's gonna go ahead and get to the ball, attack the rim one more time. Damari Carroll gets away with a little bit of contact, but Keldon's gonna finish that more times than not. On this one, we see Keldon Johnson really pursue the basketball, takes a hit from Austin Rivers, finishes. They don't count it as an and one, but he still gets to the line. He knocks down both free throws here. A little bit of a spoiler, but um, just some more awesome stuff from Keldon. Really great game from him, and it's easy to see why this was his best game of the season. One of the things that has impressed me most about Keldon Johnson is, let's pause it, ball watching. It's not something he does very often. He gets caught on this play, but for the most part, Keldon does a really good job of keeping his head up on a swivel and knowing what's going on around him. Robert Covington's going to get an open three because Keldon was watching, but he misses and mistake forgiven. 
Here are a few areas of improvement for Keldon Johnson, let's pause it. So, as we discussed earlier, he doesn't really make most of his baskets on his own, most of his points come off of assists, and that's okay, he moves well around the perimeter, he cuts to the basket, some things that you really like to see when somebody doesn't have the ball in his hands, but when he does have the ball, he doesn't have a great dribble package, not much of an in-between game, and we're going to see him go from a hang dribble to a pull-up here, he misses it, but I like how he was willing to take that with no hesitation. Watch Keldon in the corner on this defensive possession, does an awesome job as the help man, rotates over and pause it. Russell Westbrook is in a really difficult situation here. He's either going to have to force a pass to the corner to Austin Rivers, or one to the perimeter for Michael Frazier. Either one's going to be really hard, and Marco Bellinelli's going to come up with the steal here, and we're headed the other way. Keldon Johnson does an awesome job here as well. Watch him pursue the ball after this Eubanks miss. And he's going to get it, and he's going to put it right back up, fights through the contact, doesn't even bother him. You absolutely love to see it. On this play, Eubanks has Westbrook pinned, and he's going to pass it out to Keldon and pause. So he has Rudy Gay one pass away, wide open for a three, and Marco's also wide open in the right corner. I think that's probably the play you would want him to make, is just make an easy pass for an open three. But he's still able to salvage this, and he drives and kicks to Eubanks, who gets an easy dunk here with authority. And at the end of the day, it puts points on the board, so you can't really be upset with the end result. Johnson pestered Westbrook all game long, and as you can see here, he played a part in a handful of Russell's seven turnovers on the night. Here, Russ has Keldon sealed in, and then he's going to face up and try to take Keldon one-on-one, -on -one, but Keldon just sticks with him and uses that sturdy frame to force a one-footed fadeaway, and it's the Spurs ball once more. I mentioned it earlier, but Keldon doesn't have the fastest feet. Pause it. Austin Rivers has already blown by him with relative ease, and unpause, if not for Jakob Pertl coming over to contest this, it's an easy two for Rivers. Either way, Keldon makes up for it and bails Derek out of this wild pass, grabbing the ball and putting it up for an easy two. And one of the most fun reasons to watch Keldon is his nose for the ball. He always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Again, Keldon Johnson doesn't have the best court vision, but he makes a simple read and recognizes the lapse in coverage, kicking it out to Lonnie Walker for an open three. Once more, Russell Westbrook tries to bully Keldon Johnson, who's having absolutely none of it, forces a wild attempt, and Keldon secures the ball, keeps his head up in transition, scanning the floor, and then dumps it off to Rudy Gay, who unfortunately blows this assist for him. Now you can tell Keldon Johnson is getting under Westbrook's skin, blows the layup, doesn't even touch the rim here. And while Johnson definitely commits a goaltend here, you have to love the effort. A millisecond earlier and it would have been a clean block. And it's so refreshing to see someone on this Spurs team refuse to give up on a play. Then off this Robert Covington free throw miss, Keldon comes up with the rebound. And this sequence really highlights Keldon's ability to get a bucket without having a play drawn up for him. Marco's going to get the ball, make a beautiful pass here. Keldon shoots this wide open three and it's money. And let's take a look at the replay. Watch Keldon relocate to the corner, set his feet. That's just beautiful. Here we're going to see Russ lower his shoulder into Keldon Johnson, who hardly moves, retreats to the three-point line, and goes at him one more time with a nice pass. But overall, an outstanding defensive possession from Keldon. Of course, Russ is one of the best in the open court, and he cooks a flat-footed Keldon Johnson with a beautiful Euro step here, but you can't really be upset with Keldon in the grand scheme of his solid defensive performance. Now, this is by far the strangest sequence of the night, where Lonnie seems to pass up a guaranteed two points at the rim for this Keldon triple. Not the play that you would advise, and definitely not the smart play, but you'll live with the results as long as Keldon's knocking down the three. Keldon is by no means a dimer, but he catches Westbrook slipping and shovels it off to Marco, who knocks down a surprisingly stationary three-pointer. A rare slip-up from Keldon Johnson here and pause it. He inexplicably comes over to help Marco Bellinelli guard Russell Westbrook while leaving a career 36% three-point shooter and Robert Covington wide open. Russ is going to make the easy decision to kick it out to Covington, who luckily misses the shot, so no harm done in the end. Once Keldon starts going downhill here, there's not much that former San Antonio Spur DeMar Carroll can do, and he makes the executive decision to take a charge much too late, and Keldon gets an easy bucket. Keldon's going to contest this transition triple, and look at how close he gets to putting his mitts on this ball. Absolutely insane. Jakob comes up with the rebound, he kicks it to Derek, who kicks it to DeJounte, who finds Keldon in transition for an and one finish, and let's take a look at the replay. What a beautiful find from DeJounte. The Spurs excelled at pushing the pace in the bubble. 
And Kelton's going to get to the line and knock down his lone free throw, a trend which continued through the end of the bubble. I want to highlight Kelton's ability to get into a position to score without the ball in his hands. He catches his tip out from Jakob and knocks down the triple. Now this is going to be an incredibly useful skill for a Spurs team that is crowded with high usage players. After looking at all the film from the Houston Rockets game, it is quite clear to see this was Keldon's best performance of the bubble and best performance of the season. The guy went out there and his energy level was off the charts. He was more involved both by design and just his ability to get into the game from offensive boards to picking up steals. He was amazing in this game and I don't want to downplay anything that he did. I will say that he had the benefit of the doubt in the bubble of being someone who not a lot of people have film on. I mean, he just didn't play very many NBA games before we got to Orlando and that may have helped him a little bit. But regardless of that, he exceeded expectations. Now, I'm not ready to say he's the next face of the franchise or even that he's going to be an all-star anytime soon. I think it's a little bit soon for that. But I will say he was amazing in the bubble. A guy who could easily come in next year and push for that title of being the steal of the 2019 draft. And I know a lot of people were upset that Luka, you know, got drafted before Brandon Clark and, you know, a bunch of other guys who we liked. But we'll talk about Luka in another video. We should be happy that we have Keldon Johnson at 29, that he was there, that they took him. You know, he waited patiently all year, and he, he proved his worth. Now, in those eight games in the bubble, he averaged 14-5 on 64-65, 82 shooting splits. That's not going to happen next year. Keldon Johnson is not going to shoot 60% from the field and 60% from three. But if he can hover around 48% from the field and 35% from three, I think that's going to be a successful season, especially if he's able to come in in a role and either be off the bench or as a starter, averaging about 10 to 12 points per game. And I think that is a realistic expectation. As far as his ceiling goes, I'm not sure yet. I need to see more. I think we all need to see more. It was an eight-game sample size with another nine games before the bubble where he hardly played at all, like I said. But I hope you all enjoyed this. I really enjoyed doing this. It was a ton of fun for me. You know, let me know what else you all want to see. Do you want to see more film reviews? Do you want to see more prospect breakdowns? Do you want a hypothetical trade talk? I'll do any of it. So leave a comment there and don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for tuning in, guys.